Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Building Repertoires Using Chessable. In this series, I take brand new openings that I've never played before, and I'm learning them for the first time ever using Chessable courses specific to each one. So I'm working through the courses, and after you see me play these openings in my Blitz games during the series, I'll cross-reference them with the Chessable course to make sure I'm playing the right way and making sure I'm learning and, and improving for next time. So I hope you guys really enjoy the series and I hope it gives you an insight into how to study and improve at chess. Let's see what the 1500s have to offer today. And hopefully we get some good games. E4, E5. Sometimes it's hard to remember. Even play that move. But I'm getting used to it. Okay. Knight F6. Okay. I, this is incredible to say, but I actually don't think we've had this opening at all yet. <laughs> I, I really don't. Okay, so Knight E5. So we always take and take and go d6. Um, I can't really remember looking at any line other than f4 here. He does play it. I mean, it's the most logical move for a reason. We'll retreat our knight to c6 to hit the queen. And again, we've only really looked at queen c3, but I think like just looking at the position now, queen e3 makes a ton of sense. Um, I feel like if I castle here, this happens. Is that a problem for me? Rook e8. Almost queen f3 there. I think it's still kind of test. Like, I almost want to go here. Okay. Castle. I feel like this is not as scary as I might think. So do we want to go? Like basically, what's the most important thing that I can be doing in this position? Is it taking this bishop? I'm going to say that it is. Uh, and I'm going to go after the light squared bishop. It looks really strong. If e5, OK, it goes here. I can definitely go c6. He's just going to have to go back. But my knight can come into c4 here, so. Hard to say for sure. I'm going to go like this. I can always take it, so I'm, I feel like I'll just delay it one more move. e5 is not really a threat. Now I feel like we should definitely take. <laughs> yeah, so we don't want things opening up on that pawn. So now takes a knight g4. I think we'll win this um, e pawn. Knight d5 and bishop b6 is very solid, but this one feels like it's good enough. We also have queen d4 coming in and in the right moment. Queen f3 hits everything but 95 also defends everything so do we want to throw in the check and then take i'm gonna say yes not gonna pre-move this because never know what he's gonna do um but let's throw in the check Everything's covered here. We're up one pawn. It should be six will be a nice move to hold the fort here. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Queen trade after I'm up a pawn will generally not scare me too much. Um, okay, let's just go here for now. The knight's going to have some easy options. This pawn is a little bit annoying, but we also have an extra pawn, so hey. I'm not complaining. You didn't hear it from me. Rook d8 next. We definitely need an escape square, f6 or h6. That's a fairly good move. Um, I'm going to make a move rook d8, and my follow-up move is strangely going to be bishop c8. I can't live in a world where my rook's on a8 the entire game. Oh, okay. I feel like this is a good thing for me. Knight e4. I have some bishop moves that look annoying. Yeah. This one, I think, is the best one. Because if I went here, he could defend the knight. But here, he couldn't really defend the knight because there were other hanging things. Okay, let's put the bishop on d5. And now we can go like this. And we should be doing just fine. Knight f4. He's doing a good job. Of course I can win this pawn, but I actually don't really want to uh, rush it if I can help it. This kind of force matters. Um, good move by him. I, otherwise, I would have brought my king up and probably gone for like a checkmate idea. Okay, go here. The knight's defending the pawn, but in order to uh, advance them properly, I think let's just activate our king. Much easier. We'll keep the king boxed in, and it won't be a, a stalemate just because he has pawns he can move on the other side of the board, and that'll allow us to get a pawn checkmate. GG. So bishop b5, a6, knight f6, castles, um, bishop c5, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, d4, takes, takes, D6, so F4 for sure, just best move by far. And wow, so unusual, right? Every single line that we've looked at has been with A4, I guess. I guess I've just never seen this position because I've never seen a position where F4, you don't play Knight C6. Never. <laughs> and I'll be interested to know the difference. So I guess every time that we've had this position, it's been like this. This must be the only time that we've looked at it. And then, f4, you always play knight c6. So, okay, I guess this is the first time, not only that I've ever seen it in a game, but the first time that I've ever seen it in the course. Okay. With white, we're sticking with this. c6. So bishop here, I believe. g6. I'm not sure that like we've seen exactly these lines. Whoa. That one is probably not it, my dude. So yeah, maybe we're supposed to play e4 there. I'm not uh, not too sure. Start with h4. Very passive setup here. And he's letting me play h5. I don't trust what he's doing. seven start by taking knight takes whoa <laughs> that should definitely not be a move 
had to dig with a pawn. I know the age pawn feels scary, but this feels scarier. Okay. All the way back. Could go to age three, but somehow this one is uh, more attractive. Bishop d3 and castle, and maybe like g4, g5, because I think he's got to play h6. Queen b6 can be met by this. Knight e4, we can take and go knight g4. I think we can go knight g4 anyway here. It's just uh, too strong of an idea. My pieces look a little funny here in the corner of the board, but I promise you they're doing something. Not completely useless. Knight h6, if we can get him to capture, that'll be great, great for us. But he should be looking to refuse that as much as possible. Oh my god, he's making a run for it. How can we try to discourage this as much as possible? So, I mean, queen h7 is definitely discouraging because it puts the king there, which is not good. Here, here, here. So, do anything. I definitely think we should start with that. Um, we could play rook e1, but he'll play knight f6. Knight f6 just covers everything, so I want to get this check in while I still can. Let's go here. I have this check, and then this check, but after he goes here, not actually sure what's occurring there. So, of course, we can try to do this. I don't think we'll have much success. Trying to do the principal thing and keep the pieces on the um, on the board, but something tells me that's not really going to uh, last very long. Probably he goes rook b8, which would be great for us. That's helpful. So now the queen slides in with a devastating effect, and well, he's just going to let himself get mated there. I don't know what king... This king a6 was just out of nowhere. Like, it, he already did escape. Escape. I mean, it's definitely significantly worse, but he already escaped here. I thought he was just getting developed, but then he started to like put his king here. It's like, <laughs> what are you doing, man? Okay, here we are, e4, e5. So the scotch, we've been playing queen f6. Bishop e3, hands down the most common. c3, so I think we're just in the main line right now. So bishop e2, instead of bishop c4, and I think... Already, we can play this move d5. This is what we learned. If I'm not mistaken. I think it was something like d5, knight d2, castle. And then maybe queen g6. I don't know. Maybe we were supposed to play queen g6 and then d5. But um, I'll learn that very quickly right now. Oh, that after takes... I think knight takes here was probably... Could have been a better move. I'm not sure. This actually does look pretty good, though. I'm not going to lie. Okay. 
Fix here looks fantastic. I think I'm going to utilize a uh, strategy from a previous variation. I'm going to take here and I'm going to put this queen on h6 where it still watches the knight, but also hits this pawn and it's h2. It's just, I just think it's a great square for the queen. It's also out of the way. Okay. Definitely want to save, save our king. Get him where he needs to be. Bishop d6 back will make a serious threat. Um, okay, he's just hanging the queen here. I mean, hanging is in uh, allowing a trade for no reason because he's going to lose a pawn. He's going to lose another pawn. I'd like to maybe win more than uh, just pawns here, but I don't think there's a way to do that. Queen takes queen. Knight e2 will be a nasty check. We have to take here. I mean, it's winning, so I'm not not like upset to do it, but <laughs> but still. Okay, so tempting to go here to these squares. Maybe this one is good, but I'm actually looking at maybe bishop c3 as, as a good one. Go all the way back. Yeah, it's a good move, this one. Um, it's just a little bit annoying. I think I can play this move. Allows this, but I can go there next. I think we can handle this move. First of all, I can move this, but I think this will be easier. So he'll take here. And then I think we'll play bishop here like this. We can take back. And now I think all of our weaknesses are covered. We can play c5. And we will maintain that the extra pawns that we have. Two of them, to be precise. And they're connected. Rook check, bishop here is fine. Um, h4, we can actually play this, but also h5 would be would be uh, completely fine. This just happens to be very strong. And if here I have the choice between rook h4 and taking it, or taking here, all, all of which is, uh, is pretty strong. This move lost both things that were attacked. <laughs> instead of saving one, instead of saving the other, he lost everything. GG. That was the scotch. I want to just go back and double check that we played d5 right when I played it. But for the most part, I was comfortable there because I think I remembered that's what we do. We have bishop e3 here. It should be two, and yeah, d5 is the move. Castles is the only move that's covered. Um, I wonder after takes, I'm just gonna double check if we take back right away, and I think we do. As soon as I spent some time looking at it, I was like, yeah, this is actually pretty strong. Yeah, so knight takes c5 is just black significantly better all of a sudden because we're hitting that, so yeah. All right, d4, knight f6. We'll see if our opponent is a London player, and they are. So we'll play c5. This will normally get our opponents to play the moves like c3, e3, and they do. Bishop d6. So again, sticking with our setup here for the London that we've been going for every single game. Bishop d6, queen c7. I think we played it the exact same way every time. Knight d7. Now he doesn't have this. So normally, if this knight was on c6, that would be a really strong move, taking here. The way that it's been done in this situation, it's actually not. So I'm going to take here. 
And then I'm going to just take back this pawn. And now I'm the one that actually controls the center. Let's go ahead and I think throw an h6 here. Don't want to be subject to that. b4. Knight e4 looks fine. I actually do have a choice here. I know this looks ridiculous, but okay, takes. He should probably play c4, but there's just no way. There's no way that's uh that's something for us to be concerned about. There's no way. On takes is definitely interesting to me. Kind of like it. I'm gonna go here. Knight takes is a fantastic, good move. Nothing wrong with it. Um, my castle here. Yeah, let's castle. A five looks like a useful move to loosen things up. Good move. Good move. Um, I like a5. You can win a pawn here. I'll take. And then feels like it could be a little annoying. So yeah, he is going to go here. Start by taking to give, give our rook something to, something to play with, something to enjoy. Let's just go b6. And it looks like we're just kind of losing everything here, but I really like the counterplay of like rook a2, and this could be totally off base, but that's what I'm thinking. Also hitting this pawn and not letting him play bishop d3. Rook a1, by the way, is uh, probably a, a serious move there. Rook a1 might have been an interesting move last turn. Let's go here. Rook a3. Um, I don't think he can move the bishop just yet. Yeah, I know he wants to play g5, but this is a threat that I don't think he can leave there. Okay. So he's definitely going to be trading. Um, I think he just has to just play a great game, but I think he has to watch out for one thing that he might fall into. And the, the one thing that he could fall into is this. Um, he should base six. So, fortunately, maybe we can get him to play rook h1 here. Just trade and queen. Let's block the rook and then just push the pawn. Like to be able to actually stop him from playing uh, rook h8 and uh, rook b8 the way that he's going to, but I don't think I can. Love to beat him into that. There we go. I think this will just be easiest. I know it looks ridiculous, but. As soon as you cut the king off, then life becomes easy. Pretty good game um, from my opponent. I liked to, the way he fought there. I don't know about my decision to play pawn takes. Knight takes was a much easier move to play. But um, one thing remains certain, that this is the way that I think you should handle the London. It's really simple. C5 will always get your opponent playing these moves. D5, bishop, d6. And then they'll usually retreat their bishop. 
queen c7, and then knight d7. So now this is my square. And I'm the one that can expand in the center. Just looks really easy to play. h6 here I actually thought was regrettably a little slow. Um, and after b4, perhaps knight uh, d7 was best. Because I was in this position, I was like, okay, well, take c4. I'm not sure about that. So I think this was the right choice. I decided to kind of play with the initiative, which I liked. e6, and again, super risky for him to take this. So I think that our initiative is pretty serious here. Well, d4, no surprise. And we get to see e5 and bishop here. So something tells me my opponent wants to play this in knight e7. I'm getting that feeling. Maybe I can go here and fall for it. <laughs> so he's playing knight e7, so if I take it, bishop takes f2 and queen takes d1. It's a good little trick. Um, unfortunately, it is that. It is a little trick. And if you don't fall for it, then you're just completely winning. <laughs> so it's, it's literally like one single move, one single trap, but if you just don't do it, eh, I don't know what to say to you. How do we want to play this? Let's maybe castle. We can bring our knight here, so moves like that are not super dangerous. Take this knight. Not sure if we want to take it. Maybe we would just go there. King b1, knight d4. I think we should be fine here. Okay. This one. Maybe we can leave it there. I think I'm going to choose this because it looks like it simplifies. And I'm in the business of simplify. This looks nice and easy. I'm not sure I want to take that. I can probably just leave things. We're just up a clean pawn here. I would go bishop c4, but takes, takes, and then my this pawn falls as well. So let's just go here. I think to some degree this sets up this move. Takes, 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 check, king back. Takes here, then we have d5. And I guess that should be good. It's still a little bit, a uh, little bit unclear, but. Let's do it. Should be better for white, but sometimes moves like this are they feel less clean than just uh, playing normally. Yeah, so we could go here or here. Either way, I think we just want to uh, take this pawn. Bishop here, we have f3. And what we really want to do is king here and c4. Okay, he's not defending this, so that's <laughs> way too easy for me now. Um, let's go here and king c5. I think this is the easiest way to play by far. Get the rooks off the board, and now it's not really, uh, not really dangerous. Take all this material. I'm basically waiting for him to take here so I can go rook, uh, rook c7 and win the bishop.
think that'll be it. Good game. Yeah. yeah my, I've done this before myself, so not that um, people shouldn't have a bit of fun, but obviously this is pretty much something that is there for, and it's a good idea. So the point is that you play d6 and then you pre-move knight e7. So after you take, you, your opponents pre-move this and then you're like, oh, they blundered a peak. And then you fall into bishop takes f2 check and queen takes d1 and you actually are the one that loses. But as long as you play this move, uh, black's in a, he actually has a huge problem because now he needs to take this pawn back and then you'll just play knight e4 or knight b5. You'll either force a queen trade or you'll take the bishop and ruin the pawn structure or both. And in this case, we got both. And like <laughs> the game is completely over already and we're only like, 10 moves in. So not not a I don't advise playing 97. Or rather this whole line. Oh, we went for another game and we got him. All right. Well, we'll try our E45 on him. Maybe he's gonna go for Scholar's Mate. He seems to like the, the cheesy uh cheesy openings. So now this is making me wonder, D4. I haven't really seen this. I don't think we've looked at this in the course. Takes e5, d5 um, is what I'm thinking of here. Not sure if that's the right way to, to think, but definitely feels like it. Okay, he goes here. Maybe I have uh, an even better way to play, but probably in the interest of picking in the course, I'm just going to go here because that's how. That's how the transposition would work. Um, so takes, and then, and then this. I'm pretty sure we're in some sort of theory here. I'm not familiar with this stuff, but here, here, like takes, takes, knight, c3, or something like that. Because remember, there's a whole whack of pins here. <laughs> So knight here, I think. I mean, actually, I have no clue, to be perfectly honest with you, where this queen goes. Um, here, bishop b7. I'll go here. Not really sure what the... Uh, Proper moves are. Bishop g5. Looks pretty annoying. <laughs> Suppose there's bishop takes f6. Question is, what is my opponent threatening? I don't know if they're threatening something, but I think I'm about to find out. So let's go here. This definitely doesn't feel uh, good for me. Okay. Here, I'm just going to take this. So I guess like that. Now here there is knight check, so maybe this. Then castle. Okay. Hmm. I feel like we did a reasonable job getting out of that. Let's try to bring our rook down here. There's a knight h4 type of move that I want to play. I wish this did a little bit more than it does. <laughs> I wish it did more than it does. Um, 
you know, we'd love to take, but fortunately there's this uh, well-placed queen down here. So I guess I'm eyeballing this and that, trying to make something happen. Let's take this because it's free looking ish. Takes here, we take that. That is a good looking move, my man. Centralizing, I really thought we were gonna be able to play queen takes, but sadly, no. Takes here looks tempting, but I still don't see a mate, perfectly honest with you. He likes his, um, likes his variations. Yes, we take here. I'm gonna have to play this. Um, king here, we survive for a second. Okay. This is a safe pre-move. That's a safe pre-move, so is that. Yeah, now, I guess it shouldn't be too hard to bring this king in. I think we can do it in a pretty forcing way. Like we can do like this, and then like queen here, no matter where the king is, this will be fine, and then king here, and then king here, or queen there. I think that should all work no matter what. Try from Buddy Ethan. I'm sure we were behind in this game. That's for that's for damn sure. You know, welcome uh, to another position that uh, your old man here has uh, no idea about. So we'll look in the, uh, we'll link him our kick here. Maybe he can join us on kick. Go kick. Um, we'll look at the chessable course here because um, I definitely, I'm definitely curious. Wait a minute. Are we in the wrong course? I think we are. No? No, this is the right one. Yeah, I want to... Look at this, bishop c4, knight f6. So d4 has some lines. I don't think I've looked at any of them. So obviously I was pretty unprepared for this. Uh, pretty unprepared for this. Oh, hello, Ethan. We can all say hello to Ethan. Feel bad for Ethan, you know, he just he ran into a grandmaster doing a series. I don't think you can blame him for uh, launching very fair accusation. Go, Ethan. In this series, Ethan, I'm, uh, I'm learning some openings that I've never played in my life for the first time ever. And then I'm starting a brand new account on chess.com and I'm seeing how I can do ranking up against these, uh, against these openings or using these openings rather. So trying my best here, but I've never played E45 in my life, but obviously, I'm a reasonably strong player that I can uh, hopefully deal with the positions. But as you can uh, see right now, I'm doing some learning because I have never seen the move that Ethan played against me in our course yet. So we're about to learn it right now. We're doing it all on chessable. Still not cool to smurf. Oh, Ethan, you're going to get your rating back for your losses. So it's a win-win. Ethan's right on the line, you know? He could be cool, he could be not. We're, we're about to learn what kind of guy Ethan is. He's right on the line. He's about to have his moment. It's not cool to smurf. Imagine, imagine you smurfing. Oh, God, it disgusts me. The amount of free content out there, 
The amount of instruction that a grandmaster provides these days for free uh, makes me sick to my stomach. Let's see what to do about d4. So we haven't seen it so far. Okay, played in some Blitz games by the world champion. Has to be considered. Okay, here we go. This is what I'm actually curious about. Um, e5. Okay, d5. Makes sense, makes sense. This move is interesting. I wouldn't have played this. I probably would have played this and got a bad position. Okay, and knight f. Okay, so knight f3, and this is what uh, Ethan played in our game. So, this is what I wasn't prepared for. Um, so we did knight c6, which is like definitely a fine move. Like, I feel like we've seen it, seen this type of move before. But we'll play bishop b4 check. Slows down white's hunt for the initiative. Now it has to exchange with bishop d2 or give away the pawn with c3. Okay. So we'll give this a check in the future. Bishop d2, we take. Knight c6. It's interesting that black's not playing the move d6. Um, I guess he's, what, always confident that after e5 we have knight g4? Is that the point? And then knight g5, there's always knight e5. E4, E5. D3. I think it's safe to say that we haven't seen this one. Um, I'll just basically try to play the move D5, I think. Don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah, let's do this. Um, I might even take with the queen here. So bishop E2. This is just a um, just a position. Play a5, trying to restrict some space that he could choose to gain over there. Well, I'll just castle as well. So he goes here. A4 is the move that we'd really like to play. Um, but first of all, we I don't think we can play it right now because of bishop b5. But also, it's not necessary. Here. Just because there is a uh, there is a problem there. He's about to do this. Slightly annoying. I'm gonna play knight h five here. Move. Can't really do that. <laughs> kind of gross. Like this. Not loving what's happening here. So we'll offer this move up. Takes takes knight e3, then at least I can play knight f4. And we kind of want to finish development like with bishop uh bishop e6, I think. Obviously the position you know, could start to look pretty nice. Bishop b3 is a threat now. Yes, we can take, but I can leave that move there. We don't need to do it. Better to make this threat first. And queen d2, we can also play rook d8. And f6 will be a really great move. Solidifies everything, gives my king space, stops knight g5. f6 does a lot. Queen d2, it looks like this is the best move, but I'm actually also looking at bishop b3, so I can kick his rook away, and then kick his queen away. 
So makes sense that he's going for a move like this. It's counterattacking. Um, it does actually look kind of scary for me. Take six takes. He has knight g5, g6. I feel like it should be okay for me, but it's definitely a little frightening. I'm gonna go for it. Knight here, g6. It's like, yeah, it looks pretty suspicious, but let's say that it works. Definitely not completely satisfied with this um, with this position here. Now I think we need to go here. Maybe Queen E seven was also. Also a nice one. I think there's a world where we just Chad take King G6, but also Rook to um, Rook to H8. Like Bishop G6, Rook, uh, Rook H8. But I, I, I actually think um, taking there was possible. You want to go back there? Actually, do because I think this we can play rook takes h5. That's still okay. Obviously, we need to uh, speed up. <laughs> Trades are fantastic if I can get them. Knight f4 is going to at least come packaged with other threats that are easy to miss. Let's take this. Queen h1 is a threat. Good game. Only barely survived there. Another uh, another great fight. I was thinking to myself, oh, is this like, you know, is there a way we can play this that was kind of like the chorus? And I don't think so. I think d3 is just kind of a thing on its own. There's not really much, you know, e5, d3. I don't know if there's much here. Um, I feel like the course is so detailed that it might actually cover it. <laughs> so <laughs> let's have a look. It literally just covers so many moves. Like, how does it feel to see that there's like 15 moves covered and your move isn't one of them? Queen h5 is covered. Queen f3, queen e2, a4 is covered. You're joking. A4 is covered, but not d3. <laughs> it's like total disrespect. Knight f3, knight c6, is d3 here? Okay, d3 is here. Okay, here we go. This is our position. This is our position. Let, let's look at this. Let's see what, what's said about it. There's a few lines here. Hey, A5. Well, I had the right idea with A5. I played it one move later. But taking on E4 really helped white. So instead, A5 um, without taking might make a little more sense. Wow, g6. Let's keep on moving. Okay, d4, knight c3, knight f6, bishop f4, so the main starting position for the whole opening. a6, makes sense. He doesn't want to deal with knight b5, I don't blame him. But then knight c6 is a peculiar next move. Hmm. 
so we can go here, but then bishop f5. Kind of wondering about that. This is definitely not, definitely not good. There's no question about that. I think I'll go here in knight e5 and actually take with the pawn, surprisingly, and go for this. It looks a little weird. I'm also threatening g4, or intending g4 is a better way to say it. Knight takes, takes here. I feel like we've seen a position similar to this. Okay, going back now, I think it's time for h4. If takes, pawn takes may win a piece. My opponent has to be real careful here. Knight e4, and I think, I think we're very close to winning a piece here. I think, I think we are. And I don't know if it matters which one takes which one. So we have h5 coming. Here there was f6 and the bishop could be saved, but I'm pretty sure this one does the trick, and now he's got more pieces hanging. This move has a nice uh, feel to it. Just feels like the right place to be. Takes, takes, rook takes. There is queen takes. Otherwise, e6 would wreck havoc. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to start with this, though. This should be three. Of course, we'd love to trade bishops. Rook f1 puts pressure there. Okay, he's going to trade with us. That's fantastic. This is no good. Um, I'm going to go rook f4. Gets ready to double here. Gets ready to swing over here. King b1. Perfect move. Don't need any trouble there. That's a clear target on f7. Let's just make a, a small move here. Don't think... We need to be in any particular rush. And I don't really know what's going on here. I think the rook is safest. This is kind of irrelevant. Just go here and everything's protected. But if we were scared of that, we could have played queen takes and that would have been just fine as well. Rook. D8 appears to be a nice move because it, I uh, believe, gets a trade. So now we're blocking the, the checks on these squares, getting our queen in. I mean, these moves look nice, but I'm not passing up a queen trade. <laughs> no, sir. Let's do this one. It'll loosen up the e pawn. Now, put him in a box of some sort here. Maybe we can go here. He only has one move. And we just want to force him to the back rank. And then, then the position becomes um, easier to pre-move.
in G7. Uh, maybe checkmate. You never know. GG. GG, Chris. Always take your king checkmates when you can get them. Like, I know this seems routine. I do this whenever I can, but it's by, by far my most common checkmate. Because it's, when you think of a king checkmate, it is pretty rare. But I actually get it so much of the time because I do it like this. A6 um, and knight C6 here, which is just not going to be a move. Bishop here. So bishop here after a6, then the move is knight f3. Not f3, but knight f3. To play knight e5 and g4, which is where I got my idea for dealing with knight c6 by playing knight f3, knight e5. That's where I got it from. Because if knight bd7, the plan is knight e5 and g4, so I kind of treated this as the exact same. And I think that was fair. Yeah, so this isn't exactly in the course, but I think we intuited a pretty normal way to play. And um, had our opponent played uh, knight takes e5, then I think we would have reached a position that uh, we may have reached before. Wait, we're playing Sardosh. <laughs> <laughs> I know that name. Wait a minute, what's going on here? <laughs> F6 and E5? Is this a serious opening? Admittedly, I can't play my uh I can't play my line here. I think Sardosh was uh going to he was gonna chess box in Ludwig's event. I don't think they're having it now, but this move might happen. I can definitely see that. A little uh, blunder ski. A little blunder ski. Drop in the old biz bob. I think we pop in with the knight here due to knight c7. It has to be taken. Oh no, this is definitely his account. <laughs> this is definitely Sardosh. What do you mean he's not playing chess right now? He's streaming something else right now, McMaster? He's playing a game on the side? This is 100% his account. He's playing League of Legends right now on stream? This is for sure his account, though. Oh, he's in champ select. Okay, well, maybe he's... Well, that's normal, right? Playing chess and champ select. That's funny, though. It's, def it's definitely his account. I I've seen his account before. We can hit him with the, you know, castling sauce here, you know? Long Castle is the, uh, you know, he's probably in champ select right now, getting his runes. Long Castle is the good sauce, because queen here and takes, we have knight c7, so I don't think we're overly concerned with queen d7. Let's play a4 to try to get this there. Probably going to be losing some pieces here. This is a nasty situation for uh, my guy here. <laughs> Feels bad. We ran into Sardosh while he was while he was streaming. That's that's a massive KO. Sorry, bud. So
Sorry there, rap. <laughs> Didn't mean to do it to him like that. Hey, he's in the middle of champ select. He's in the middle of champ select. The guy was, uh, the guy was busy. We hit him with this tactic. This tactic, you wouldn't blunder if you were playing for real. But yeah, that's Sardosh. He, um, he played in Pog Champs, as you can see. Pog Champs 3 winner. Um, and then I think he was slated to do chess boxing in this year's event, but the event obviously um, didn't go on. But yeah, he. Uh, I think he was going to fight, which is kind of cool. Okay, d4, knight c3. Okay, bishop f4 has to be the, like, we got to stick with our same ideas here. Knight b5, so of course knight a6 is forced. Play e3, bring the knight back. I feel like this move is kind of a nice one for me to see. So how do we want to play this? I want to make sure that I don't let him play c5. And I actually don't know if I can do that. So I will jump in with my knight. Kind of some weird threats here. So I think he's got to move his knight. Like th This guy can't operate on the side of the board like that. So we'll probably see one of these two moves. Um, knight b8, knight d7 looks really natural for him and will fail to knight takes c6. So we'll see if he plays that. Um, but I think our plan is like bishop d3, knight back to e2, castle, these sorts of moves. And knight e4, we can generally meet it with f3. Yeah, so he does do this. Let's do this. Knight d7 is such a uh, normal move. As I said, you could see that one coming from a mile away. And knight c6 is just a simple tactic that. You can't leave your bishop undefended like that. Can't bring the knight in between them. So he's gonna go here. Now at this point, I mean this is a great move, but I believe that this is an even better move. Yes, he can go knight there, but I'm happy to take it. Knight e4. Uh, he might want to go knight back to d6, which is okay. Let's continue with my plan of going knight e2. I think he'll go here, but then I'm happy to play b3. Okay, he goes there, but again, he's not going to have any pieces joining this attack, so can it really work? It's castle. I, I don't know like what else. He's only got literally one piece, so here comes the slowest attack you've ever seen. Rook h6 and rook... Um, rook h6 and rook g6. What do we want to do? I want to play f3, but I don't like queen takes on e3 check. A little bit annoying. I think we're going to start with the knight. Uh, it happens to stop uh, rook g6, so I think it's a great move anyway. But then the move f3 is actually possible. So I think it's what probably what we want to go, with, go for. Let's do this. Taking and then playing f3 was also a pretty nice idea. I think we'll go queen d2. It has an idea of queen b4, just like a random threat or option. Uh, rook e1. Okay, he does do this. It's a pretty, pretty good looking move. Let's go to the side. I'm not sure I want to allow pawn to h3 by him. So let's just take that under our control. 
little threat here because what I, okay, he's gonna allow me to do this. I thought that was risky. Um, I was about to say my plan was then bishop uh, e2 so that if this, I could play knight d3. Now we take this and I feel like uh, with all the pieces getting involved here, this has to be, this has to be bad news for him. Yeah, I think he's just mated here. So queen e7 and bishop e6 will be mate. GG. GG. So this was the Dutch. Um, with knight b5 and e3. I'm going to check the course here. So here, so knight b5, e3, this is what we did. When we get attacked, go back. Knight there. Was it bishop d3? Oh, that is the line. <laughs> That's it. That's the line. <laughs> okay. Well, we had a good idea. We had a good grasp on the uh, on the position. D4. Oh, and pre-move C4. Okay, so we're going to get our Budapest, but holy smokes, the pre-moves from the guy. He's allowing me to take those knight there. Just wild. Wild. Okay. Very, very uh, aggro player. I think... We're gonna we're gonna play in the you know most <laughs> boring way possible. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna try to just like keep this pawn, like like the most boring guy like you've ever ever met. Okay, let's take. I think this is okay for us. We're just gonna go here. And we got one extra pawn. That's all I can say about the position. <laughs> we have one extra pawn, folks. Okay. Knight g5, we can actually go f6. Not sure this is actually the best move for him. Okay. Takes and knight e5 no longer works. Let's even stop this move now, which is a real privilege for me. And then rook d8 will... Uh, we'll trade, trade everything. Yeah, he he should not want to trade pieces here. He's down material, so that's obviously not smart by him. Knight d3, okay. So we're up one pawn in this endgame. Definitely requires some technique. If he plays knight c4, it requires no technique, because <laughs> then it's a pawn endgame. But he should keep his knight on the board, and he does. However, I say that he does, but he actually kind of doesn't. Yeah, now we're going to play this really nasty move, bishop e4, and that effectively is a forced win because he cannot move his knight for the rest of the game without trading it, right? He will be forced to trade the knight. It will happen. That's a guarantee. And so the second that we can um, take that knight, we will. And that's it. That's, that's the entire game plan. We go here. We'll make sure to make a pass pawn over here. Okay, and then before we make a pass pawn, like we could go b4 here, totally winning. But my preferred way to win these positions is make yourself one step away from making a pass pawn and then just go take everything. Because imagine that your opponent like goes like around your pawns to get, first of all, it'll take them a long time to do that. But the second they start to turn the corner to take your pawn, then you push and they can't not take you because then you'll just go get a queen. What are they going to play a4? You just get a queen. So they have to take you, you lose your two pawns, you get rid of the one, but by that time, you're already taking everything. So yeah, you can play b4, but I, I just think this is like the simplest way. And so against people that run their king over here, first of all, you could push and start to do that. But my favorite thing to do is just push pawns here as much as you can. Just push as much as you possibly can. Doesn't even matter which ones you push, it truly doesn't. And yeah, we could do this, but basically once you've pushed all your pawns and they're committing to like leaving their king over here, then you push here and now use it as a sacrifice. Okay, so he's going to go here. This is the final step. This is now a pass pawn protected, which means he can never, ever take a step behind it. Otherwise, we make a queen. So now we just collect everything. He can, like now he can't go past the fourth rank or we just queen. So just make sure you don't pre-move. Um, and again, look, he took a step past the fourth rank. Now we'll make a 
Now we'll make a queen. And a pretty, uh, pretty easy win. Let's see if we can uh, get him to go over here. Oh, okay, so it, it might have worked. I was thinking like he might go up, but it was impossible for me to stalemate, literally impossible. The closest we could have got is like here, king there, right? And then maybe, maybe. Here. I'm trying to think of like you know the possibilities. So we have this king here. I think we had this. And I guess technically he could be in this position. He could be in this position with his uh, with my turn again. And then I would play this. And then he could go there. So that would be the wrong move. But you're always good to put your queen on these four squares. All right, e4, fitting that we need to, uh, only one of us can make it to, uh, can make it to 1600 here. And the funny thing is, I don't actually think we've gone over d4 and c3, truly. I'm going to play d5. Uh, I'm not sure that we've looked at this. <laughs> I'm not sure we've looked at this, but let's do it. Okay, now you're letting me take, and my queen's defended, so I'm not sure that was smart. I like the energy, allowing uh, an, extra, an extra capture. Definitely feels like, a, like the right idea, um, and I'm going to respect that decision enough to just play this. Okay, bishop here. So we're definitely going to remove our knight, but also gain some time on the bishop. And that's really important. Now I can take you and castle. And now without the queens on the board, this, this isn't that dangerous. If the queens were on the board, maybe I'd be a little more scared. Okay. I want to get our pieces to the middle, maybe this move. Knight c4. Okay, not really bothered by taking. We're ahead two pawns, and they're over here. Let's take this. C6, B5, and basically everything will be defended there. I actually missed this move, bishop c7. That's a great move. Um, it's just going to play c6, b5, but luckily, um, our blunder is when we're, or our mistake is when we're ahead two pawns. So I'm still going to have one to spare. Lucky me. Let's go ahead and make a escape square with h6. Um, this guy's pretty strong. I can trade it off with bishop e6. It's not a very attractive move, um, bishop e6. So I'm going to go here, trying to encourage bishop c5, and then bishop e6. A rook e1 should be played. I think I'll manage here. Do we, we do have some moves. Bishop g5, bishop a5. Okay. I think we want to we wanna take this. It's gonna be our next. It's gonna be our next move. Let's take and try to bother the bishop for the moment. Okay. Hitting this pawn. I'll offer to trade bishops. 
Maybe bishop back to e7 as well could be nice. Bishop b6 can be played, but wasn't actually sure if this was a good, uh, good thing for white or not. Because now you're actually blocking your own rook from attacking b7. Could be more annoying than you think. So let's go here. So now I think we kind of forced the bishops to be exchanged. Um, maybe we even, after this move, force more than the bishops to be exchanged. Or if you don't play this, we may even <laughs> do better than that. Okay, so now we can do this. And with the rooks tied down, the move c5 is just going to win here. It's going to win another pawn. And we have our escape square, so we're not too, um, not too worried. And yeah, let's just push these. Check. Oh, he should have gone up the board. Uh, I understand, but yeah, should have should have gone up the board. I'm gonna play f6 so that he doesn't get too optimistic here with like g5, g6, and some mate ideas. But if I do it this way, he just doesn't have any any chance to go for mate. I'm just going to go for the slow one, two, three. Your pawns will always be able to advance. And let's make sure we take this, most importantly. Um, here, we can give up the rook and queen a pawn. But I think we go for the slow roll approach. Just one, two, three, you know, one after the other. Here, we can actually just queen. And takes here. And we can use... Uh, Just uh, get that checkmating pattern in. The ladder all the way down. GG. Okay, the Danish Gambit for all the Gambit lovers. And our move is Queen E7. The refutation from modern computers. In general terms, it's not advisable to bring the Queen out early, but justified concretely because it attacks the E4 pawn. Okay, Queen E7. C3 and then queen takes d4 definitely looks silly. And that after knight e4, we just win the e pawn. Is that what they're saying? <laughs> knight c6. Okay, there's bishop uh, b5 here. But knight d7. Oof. Better than bishop d7. White loses the bishop pair and the pawn on e5 is super weak. So tempting to play that. I almost did it even now. C3. So this, this, like all tempting. Even d3 your pawn takes. But queen e7, a move that I would never even think of. Never even think of. So bishop d3, which again looks super strange. Why would you play c3 and then bishop d3? But okay. Um, d5. No, this this doesn't look right. I don't even know what this line is. And we play bishop d7, bishop e6, and long castle. Yeah, this line does, just does not look good. You made it to the end of yet another episode. I hope that this was really informative letting you guys know how to study chess, how to improve at it, and how to use Chessable as a tool to help do so. At the end of the day, I think it's one of the best ways that you can learn openings, and I think that this series is a pretty good example of that. So if you liked those courses that I was working through, or if you wanted to pick up uh, different ones more specific to your repertoire, make sure to use chessable.com forward slash chessbrock if you're gonna upgrade to a pro membership. That's all for me, and we'll see you in the next episode.